Hey friends, welcome to this week's nursery tour and welcome to a much cooler, drier, much more pleasant North Carolina. Uh, fall is officially only just a few days away, but man, it seems like we are in a little reprieve right now. Had a great day outside, just doing all sorts of fun things and um, barely even broke a sweat. So. My fellow people who deal with humidity, you understand what I'm talking about. Today we're going to do a nursery tour and show you, of course, some of the fantastic uh, annuals, perennials, and shrubs that we are offering here at Creekside Nursery in Dallas, North Carolina, Zone 7B, just west of Charlotte. We are open on Wednesday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. We're just going to take care of all the little housekeeping details right away. This coming Saturday, the first official day of fall, we've got some fun things happening. One, we have Bolton's Curbside Cookery, who is coming back once again. These are our sweet friends who have um, an amazing food truck and they make the best burgers you have ever put your lips around divine. So they will be here. So come do a little plant shopping and plan on staying for lunch. Also, that morning at 9 a.m., we're going to be offering a free class workshop on all things about monarch butterflies. Come join us as we learn together about these beautiful little friends of ours that, of course, are such a great um, beneficial pollinator to our environment. And our customer and friend, Angie, is going to be leading this class, and she is just a huge wealth of information about monarchs so you can um, it is free we're just kind of asking if you will just let us know that you're coming and sign up for that so if you're going to be in town on this saturday september the 23rd um, please just sign up for it right now the best way to do it is through our facebook page we have a event and you just can say that you are going i will put a link for those of you watching in YouTube, I will put it in the comments so you can sign up for that just so we can kind of have a head count, but it is free um, for people of all ages. So littles, mediums, bigs, and elders, we would love to have you all. All right, let's go through the nursery. It is, gosh, it's like 5.30 in the afternoon, um, and Jerry's telling me something back there. What is he telling me? Yes, of course, the online store is open. Uh, so you can go ahead and make your purchases for um, the shrubs that we have available and the um, Felco products, all the different kind of products that you will see on there. Remember, we are doing kind of a soft launch into this website e-commerce because we've done it before and it was just madly successful, which equals overwhelming. So we are only offering quart size shrubs at this time. They will begin shipping at the end of this month come um, later this fall we're gonna go ahead and i think we're looking at our perennials so we're making selections for perennials so if you have certain perennials that you're interested in i would love it if you would put it in the comments below because we are starting to work on that inventory list so if you've got a certain perennial that you would love for us to carry to offer to you the customer put it in the comments below and we will make sure to add it to that order um, but those will you know start selling in the spring we'll have annuals perennials of course more shrubs just know that the online inventory at gardening with creekside and what you're about to see here at the garden center are different right we are not shipping a limelight standard this is a 15 gallon we're not shipping it to uh, kalamazoo michigan or you know i don't know santa clara california, santa clara, california. Um, what we have online is what we have online annuals perennials coming later shrubs only in quart size containers and um, as beautiful as my mums are i'm not shipping you my mums we've had people ask if we would ship mums we were just talking about it and one of the kiddos was standing right next to us and they were like, I don't think that would go well uh, because mums can be a little tender and these in 10 inch pots um, are nice and big and beautiful. Now we do offer all the beautiful colors. So I would encourage you go to your local garden center and support them with your fall annuals. I am very honored and very appreciative that you want to buy the pansies and the violas and the, and the mums from us. We're not shipping those go visit your local garden center they will be more than happy that you came tell them jenny sent you wherever you may be in the country tell them jenny from gardening with creekside said go to your local garden center you need to shop there so coming down um can we just talk about how the hibiscus are still blooming 
This is Evening Rose, and Evening Rose, I mean, she's just a, she's an overachiever. She is still blooming just days away from the beginning of fall. Gorgeous color on it, beautiful flowers. Um, we did get some new, um, a fresher stock of hibiscus. We're going to talk about those in just a second. But we're going to mosey our way down here um, to the shrub lot, and this is the sun shrub lot because fall we've talked about this so many times fall is the perfect time to be planting um, whether it's perennials or shrubs trees now is go time especially if you were in the south southeast if you were in cooler climates you really need to do it before those really cold temperatures hit especially if you're talking about places where you're like your ground freezes that didn't happen here in the south so we can plant easily all of these things you know all the way through you know gosh november december tons of time so this is a great time to do it because temperatures go down the top plant foliage begins to lessen right you don't get a lot of top growth in the fall winter but what's happening is your root growth gets really really extensive and grows so what do we have here one of my favorites is this viburnum now this is definitely going to be for my southern people this is um sweet talker and let me show you the tag i know y'all love your tags this viburnum is actually an evergreen and i have two of them in the berm they took a very hard hit after the arctic blast last year right before christmas completely defoliated but they came back with a vengeance and they are gorgeous and nice and big hardy in zones seven to eight these will be eight to ten feet tall three to five wide and what's really fun about sweet talker is because it's one of the first shrubs to bloom each year so it's got really pretty little tiny little pink blooms that have a delicious perfume uh, fragrance and then of course that thick glossy foliage is just year round and you will get some fall color like the the foliage will turn a really nice burgundy-ish color i dare say that i'm seeing a little bit that it's starting to turn a little bit here um, we've been really warm here in the south so for us last year we had cooler temperatures early on not this year um, so we are so excited to have cooler temperatures foundation plants that's what I would consider the this little block right here mr. bowling ball um, this is an ar crypt arborvitae Thuja. oh gosh it just went out of my brain yeah arborvitae so mr. bowling ball is going to be it's really cold hardy I want to say it's like zones three to eight it has a really nice soft fine foliage like it's really soft it is not prickly at all i love this plant i love the texture of it i love the color of it it will stay this color year round and it's nice and petite like i think the max is like two and a half feet maybe by three feet wide but just this would be perfect in front of your house or if you're looking to add evergreens to your gardens mr bowling ball if you want to go with something a little that kind of that same texture but you need something a little bit more color in it then this is fire chief it too is an arborvitae but this fire fire chief you can see that it will change colors it's starting to queue up even a little bit more and it gets that copper tops on it um, as it gets colder the whole top of the plant will turn that kind of that brown coppery red color it is not dead it is not dying that is what it does um, and so it will bring some really neat texture just the two of those together right there i love it um, i love the color difference i love their they have a similar texture but just the color difference is really fun if you want to shape these you can but they're really like maintenance free as far as pruning you're not going to have like rogue limbs that you need to take care of we've got some plants here from southern living we've got the orange rocket barberry next to the sunshine ligustrums these would make a great pairing in the fact of the color the texture on them are super cool those orange rockets are going to be hardy in zones five to nine full sun to part shade now they're, they're going to be columnar right so they're going to be like a four feet tall one and a half wide like you can tell by the habit on it right now it does have that columnar habit to it they do have thorns like barberries do so that's going to increase its deer resistance and its rabbit resistance to it barberries are deciduous so just keep that in the back of your brain unlike our sunshine ligustrums here that are evergreen they have a very very soft um, foliage to them and 
for me, like when I feel it, you would think that it is deciduous. It's not, it is an evergreen. The more sun you give these, the brighter yellow they are. So they definitely need the full sun. They can be kept anywhere between like three to six feet tall, um, what three to four feet wide. So again, a great foundation planting when you pair it with anything, like you could bring those Mr. Bowling Balls in front of here, use those together, would be beautiful. We've got purple daydream laura petalums. Everything here on this front would be great for foundation plantings. These are the nice, really petite laura petalums. Again, a nice southern shrub, hardy in zones seven to 10, and the purple daydream is two to three feet tall, three to four wide. Great color to it, and then of course, my favorite flower ever, gardenias. So we have both the uh, pillow talk and steady as she goes. The main difference between those is gonna be size. Steady as she goes is gonna be bigger. They both have the beautiful double blooms. Like look, classic gardenia bloom right there. Double flower with the most delicious, iconic gardenia smell you have ever come across. We were loading up some of these, some pillow talks for a customer, uh, Gigi. Hi, Gigi. On um, Saturday, she lives in Georgia and she got some pillow talks and they were, she was joking. She was with um, her friends that they wanted to put just, a, they were in a truck, wanted to put one of the pillow talks in the, in the truck with them on the way home because it smelled so divine. Now, a fun little twist on a gardenia is this one from Southern Living. This is Diamond Spire and where Pillow talk and steady as she goes, they're gonna be kind of wide out, right? And they have some height to them, of course, but they're wider. Gardenias typically tend to be a wider shrub. Diamond spire, can you tell and look at that, that habit? It is going to be more upright. Now, the difference with the diamond spire, there's a couple of things. It is columnar, so it's gonna be upright. It's gonna be three to four tall and two feet wide. It has a single bloom as opposed to a double bloom but still has that nice fragrance to it. Full sun to part shade. And I love it because of course it's a gardenia, but it's really fun. We have two of these on our back patio by the steps going up is the foliage. They have extremely glossy leaves. Gardenias historically have glossy green leaves. I'm gonna let Jerry show you. Their little, their little leaves are very, very different than a traditional gardenia. They remind me kind of like a little thumbprint. Like if you were to take your thumb and push it down, but it's very different than let's say over here, this is steady as she goes, right? So historically gardenias will have more of an elongated leaf on it, right? So you can see those two differences right there, the difference between the two. So you could have these like very close to each other and they would look like very different plants while giving you that great fragrance. And they are hardy in zones seven to 10. The azaleas, the reblooming azaleas, man, they're popping out. They are happy, both whether it is the encore azaleas or the perfecto mundos, they are flushing out with their fall flowers. These are repeat bloomers that need at least um, five to six hours of full sun or more. So we go basically from a very nice petite short. So this is autumn bonfire, nice short. And then you can tell as we go up, the plants will get bigger. So whether you are looking for a beautiful red, a solid double white, a gorgeous purple, we have a soft pink, you want to buy color, they have azaleas for you um, in all sorts of different shapes, sizes, and colors. Now here, this is the fresh batch of summerific hibiscus that we got from our friends at Panoramic Farm. Um, and oh my gosh, so we got these two specifically because without a doubt, these were our two most popular. We have Edge of Night that Jerry is showing you right now with those, I mean like neon fluorescent pink flowers. And then we have Holy Grail, which still has that nice dark foliage to it, but it has just that huge dinner plate size red bloom. Look at this. Isn't that fantastic? Gorgeous. Both of these hibiscus are going to be, they are perennials. 
They are super cold hardy. They love the heat. They love the humidity. They love water. So the more water you give them, the more sun you give them, the happier they're going to be, the longer they're going to bloom, just like our evening roses. But these are considered gumdrops. So the evening rose would be a little bit, I would say, more columnar because it's tall. These are going to be wider. These are going to be a little bit shorter and wider. So just keep that in the back of your brain when you're out shopping for your summer mythic hibiscus. They come in, oh, sorry, Jerry, we need to back up. I'm going to show them something. Um, Panicle hydrangeas. If you are in the south, if you're in warmer zones, uh, I would dare say, well, any uh, warm zones, even in cooler zones, it's a great time to plant hydrangeas because hydrangeas, when you plant them in the hot, hot summer, they don't do well. I lost two out of three of my puffer fish and it was, it, it just, it didn't go well. It was so stinking hot and I thought we could do it and one perished pretty quickly. Really well, yeah, so one within like a week, I was like, eh, this doesn't look good. The other one, she was doing great. And then for like a month and all of a sudden she just went, Vroom! just, you know, nose, what do you call it, nose dived and just died. And then the third one, man, she's rocking it out. And they're literally within like four feet of each other. So who knows? My point is plant your hydrangeas in cooler temperatures. Now, plant, begin planting them now all the way through November, December. This is a little lime punch. Now, I was on uh, Facebook and I was on a gardening page and somebody was, um, Talk, I'm not say they were fussing. They were upset because their panicle hydrangeas were not turning pink. And I think they were talking about, I think there was little lime punch that they were talking about. And she said, mine just went straight brown. Here you go. So my question to her in my brain was, where do you live? Because if you're in the South, um, probably, most likely, if you do not prune your hydrangeas during the growing season, which most people don't, then your high, panicle hydrangea blooms, probably right now, they look brown like this, okay? So they're brown. That is nothing that you are doing wrong. No, hear me very well. You're not doing anything wrong. We have hot, humid, long summers. When these bloom, they need cooler nighttime temperatures to take on the, that nice, pretty pink, red hue. If you're in cooler climates or if you're in a, you know, a higher elevation with cooler t um, nighttime temperatures, then you're going to get beautiful pink coloration. If you're not like we are, you're not going to happen. These are, were new crops this year, right? This summer, I want to say, or they were pruned, something. Anyway, my point is the blooms are new. They didn't bloom early on in the season. It was a later bloom. Therefore, we have had some cooler nights for us and they are starting to take on some little pink cues like look right here like look at this one we're still we've got buds right here this is a beautiful fresh little lime punch right here and so this will more than likely all turn a beautiful pink because we're getting those cooler nighttime temperatures so just just hear me on that don't beat yourself up you're not doing anything wrong it's just it's hot and we live in the south and we we're not in michigan that's the price we have to pay for, um, I, I, I do it as a trade-off, right? Because in the winter time, we have great weather, right? <laughs> we love it. And my sweet friends in Michigan are like, no more snow, we're tired of it. But yet they get gorgeous hydrangeas. Um, all right, we got a fresh shipment of land and sea compost, fresh and nice pallets because we have run out. And so we got it restocked. We will have a tractor trailer coming in like October, um, so this will hopefully get us through um, the next couple of weeks. So if you need land and sea, now's the time to come get it. We have got it. And also my people who do have that thick clay soil, we went ahead and got another pallet of um, Daddy Pete's soil enhancement. This is going to be like the, the pine bark finds, the aged pine bark. So if you have that thick clay soil and you're looking to provide some aeration to your soil, then this is a great amendment for that. The fall annuals, of course, we talked about it at the beginning. They are all here. The, we're going to get a new shipment in, I believe, this week of violas and pansies and kale and all sorts of great things. So we still have a nice selection. So you folks come at the beginning of the week, we've got plenty for you to choose from. 
gorgeous mums. Like again, this is not even all of our mums, but you can see these are the ones that are starting to crack color, whether it's that kind of that pinky purple, depends on what you want to call it. Yellow, we have white, more purple, more yellow. We've got some red over here. Lots of different um, ones to choose from for you. So all you have to do is add water, nothing else. No fertilizing, no pinching, no pruning. Just simply water them, keep them well watered. Put a saucer underneath them that will help with your watering. And um, yeah, there you go. We've got a few of the Beyond Pink Caryopteris. Yeah, that'll be it for a while. Yes, this will be it for a while. We are growing them. So there's five left here. Once these are gone, they're gone until um, the warm weather of the spring comes around. More than likely, unless we could find them again. Um, but you want to talk about a pollinator attractor? Man, this is one. This is, I've got, I'm counting at least five different pollinators, six or seven, yeah. on this one plant. It is a late season bloomer. So, great way to support your pollinators put it in the hot dry areas um, for sure so we've got miss huff i have got people asking all the time if we have got miss huff lantana are these still here i don't know why these well we haven't talked about them that's why because i forgot last video <laughs> that's why we're doing the video now so miss huff is a lantana that is definitely a perennial for us here in north carolina zone 7b I know my people who are warmer than us. You have a ton of different varieties of lantanas that are nice and hardy. This is one without a doubt that I say for sure is a perennial for us. Get it in the ground now while we still have warm temperatures. Let those roots get nice and happy and let it go. Miss Huff, if you remember, if you're a follower of us, I had a Miss Huff, give her room to grow. She will get ginormous. Mine was easily uh five five and a half feet tall and probably eight feet wide now that was a plant that was probably six six years old um so think long term she will get big but you want to talk about a magnet for butterflies this is the plant uh, so we've got lots of that available for you we also have a verbena from southern living a beautiful red this is the endurascape red verbena heat drought tolerant it is a perennial it is going to be a perennial in zones seven. yes seven to ten so endurescape red there you go we've got a couple of those for you to come choose from um, the chef's choice rosemary we offered these in the spring i believe it was or was it last year i, I it was this year time y'all it just goes away from me this is a great oh rosemary you can use it as a culinary rosemary but this oh it smells divine it also i mean it works great as a container like put this in a container put some pansies violas um some of the Ms. america oh my gosh i'm creating a container right here before my very eyes this would be great evergreen delicious you can cook with it it is a perennial um hardy in zones at six to eleven of course rosemaries they're not they're a no fuss kind of plant so this would be great pair it with your fall annuals y'all and then come spring you can swap those out and put something else in there um agastache this is the blue fortune look at this plant now i'm going to just go ahead and tell you full disclosure here we had these and we're growing these in the sp spring it started i guess and y'all about i don't know what was it like a month ago they were on this back table and they were tall and they were leggy and they were floppy. And I was like, Cece, let's just whack them. Let's just cut them. Hello, look at that. Is that not gorgeous? But you can see right here, can you see? Sorry, I get so excited about these things, y'all. Um, there's, there's where we cut it and we were not like kind at all. We cut it right here and it bushed out. Blue Fortune is one of those industry standard classic Agastaches that's going to be hardy in zones four to nine, basically three feet tall, two feet wide. An amazing pollinator plant. This thing is gorgeous right here. Beautiful. Don't be afraid to trim your perennials. 
Mimi and I, my mama, were in the garden today and some of those perennials, they were looking rough and we whacked them. I mean, we just, we were taking care of some business for sure. Lots of perennials of still, tis the season, plenty of proven winter daylilies and flocks. We've got penstemons, we've got, oh my gosh, we've got coneflowers, we've got dianthus, um, all great things. Look at this. Oh, can I, can I do a teaser? Will Jerry let me do a teaser? Back up just a little bit. Okay, the teaser is because I don't have any of these for sale. So just bear with me. Coming soon though to online in the spring. <laughs> Japanese anemone. This is fall in love sweetly. Oh my gosh, it's wet. The sprinklers were on before we came up here, y'all. Okay, now, if you know Japanese anemone, one thing is for sure, they like the sun. This is a, a, a weird area, so you can see that they're going towards the sun. But Japanese anemone typically will bloom in late summer, early fall. Fall in love sweetly, or so sweetly, I may be wrong on that one, is a double pink flower. And it is stunning, y'all. I love this plant. Literally, when I say we do nothing to it, we do nothing to it. Other than when it's done, we'll shear it back. Now, for us, it does not um, reseed. Your mounds get bigger, but I don't have these popping up all over my garden. Love this plant. It will be coming soon. Um, when we open up the perennials, they will be on there. Fall color. Definitely, you want this beauty. Now, come on over here. We're going to tiptoe over here because when we were doing our garden tour last week, I forgot about these. So excited. Let's see. I'll just pull one out for you. Here we go. Climbing hydrangea from Proven Winners. This is a flirty girl. So my folks who are fascinated, intrigued by a climbing hydrangea, this is flirty girl from Proven Winners. Nice big leaf on it. And it looks like it, it, I promise it's not, it looks like a holly leaf, but it is not pokey. Nice big leaf on it. Flirty Girl is a climbing hydrangea. And you're like, what is a climbing hydrangea? It is a vine. It is going to be hardy in zones five to nine, and it goes in part shade. Now, that means filtered sun, morning sun, afternoon shade, not full on hot, hot sun, okay? Cannot do that. You will fry it and it will not do well. Climbing hydrangeas are a little slow to start. Like it takes them a couple of years to really get acclimated to their new home. And then once they start growing, they take off. You're gonna wanna plant it somewhere where it can grow. So a tree. Um, a big, huge arbor, something that's big because, <laughs> you ready for this? Um, it can get 40 to 50 feet tall. Yes, I did say that right. 40 to 50 feet tall, four to seven feet wide. It will take over a tree. So like we have this huge pine tree right here, um, nice and big. It will take that over and, but it's not going to hurt the tree. It's not like you're in the South kudzu. It's not going to smother the tree. They have a beautiful, um, what is it? Symbiotic relationship with one another. It will attach to the tree, but not hurt the tree. Flirty girl does it beautiful fragrant white blooms um, that create a cool oasis in early summer. Now, I will say that this is a false hydrangea, so it is um, false hydrangea vine. So there you go. But we call it as a climbing hydrangea. So it can go up a tree, a pergola, wall, um, any kind of thing like that. So you're going to have to kind of, especially in the beginning, kind of help her get it going. And then once she starts growing, she will attach and be very happy. So I have already uh, pulled one of these for the signature garden because I will uh, plant it at the base of one of our trees over there. The hydrangeas, our max macrophyllas, are starting to put on some um, buds. We'll get to those in just a second because they're up here. Hydrangea season, like not hydrangeas, hydrangeas, yes, hostas. Hostas and hydrangeas, fall is the perfect time to plant them. 
don't look at the foliage. So if you come and you're like, oh my gosh, look at that foliage, it looks terrible. Well, yeah, it does, I'm not gonna lie, that looks bad. But this is Angel's, Angel Falls. Don't worry about that. That's getting ready to die in probably a month when we get, when we get our first freeze. You're thinking about the root system. So come and look at your hostas. You've got big, huge, fat, heart-shaped leaves. You've got some more elongated, dark, dark green leaves. You've got uh, guacamole, stained glass, gorgeous colors. Look at the stems. Some of them have really dark stems. Beautiful, deep purple flowers, white flowers assortment when you're doing um hostas you want to think variety don't think that you have to go um like all matchy matchy no 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 get little ones too those go at the front i love this this is um wrinkle in time so stinking cute we have the eucharas the corbels this is of course that dolce wildberry it is a beautiful beautiful um, purple with kind of the silver overlay on top of it astilbes this is dark side of the moon it is a beautiful astilbe that is a dark dark almost black color that will do i believe it's the rosy pink flowers on it dark side of the moon is listed as anywhere from full sun to shade the cooler you are the more sun it can handle if you're in the south please don't put this in the full sun or it will fry and it will die and you will be very upset give it filtered light a little bit of morning sun but not hot afternoon sun give it a break in the afternoon or it will turn into a crispy critter we have right here look at this jerry oh my goodness i just had a bug go in my eye okay i got it out um look at this hydrangea y'all so this is let's dance ariba the let's dance series those reblooming hydrangeas this is a big leaf hydrangea and it will be ph dependent meaning that it's going to be anywhere from pink to blue to purple depending on your soil ph because of the fertilizer we use it is pink if this were in our acidic soil of course it's going to be blue but um, blue to purple so the let's dance ariba is hardy and zones four to nine only two to three feet tall and wide this is going to be for us again the warmer you are, the more shade it needs, um, but it is anywhere from full sun to part sun. If you're in zone four, yeah, stick it out in that full sun. It'll be just fine. If you're in a zone nine, please don't do that. Your hydrangea will fry, but it is at reblooming. That is why we have a beautiful bloom and buds coming up on those as well. Um, so we have all sorts of different ones. So that was Ariba. Here is uh, Let's Dance Can Can which is a beautiful, like a lace cap we've got here. They are getting ready to pop out. We've got the blue jangles in here somewhere. They're all kind of running together right now, um, but beautiful foliage on them. We've got buds popping out. These are reblooming. So if the weather will cooperate with us, then we will have um, beautiful late flowers on them. Now, this was another one that I failed to talk about when we did our nursery tour last week. They were actually here last week, but I forgot to talk about them. So here I am, so excited. Native azaleas. So if you're familiar with native azaleas or deciduous azaleas, this is one from our friends at Southern Living. This is solar glow. Azaleas historically are evergreen. Your traditional azaleas are evergreen. However, if you have what we call native azaleas, they are deciduous and they do these really like neon colors, whether it's this like this orange or yellows. I think I wanna say there's like some reds. They have really bold, bold colors. This is gonna be hardy in zones five to nine. So very adaptable. It's even though it's from Southern Living Plants, it's not just a Southern plant. Anywhere from full sun to part shade. So still more on the sun side, right? six to eight tall four to five wide you want to put it in a place where it can grow and you just leave it alone so the solar flare is um, great for light shade and even sunnier locations so it has a also a honeysuckle like fragrance i've already pulled one to go in the chicken coop garden yes i did i did that on saturday so you can just see as kind of jerry just kind of pans around 
tons of hostas. We've got um, all sorts of both, whether it's sun or shade plants, eucharas, we've got the grasses, these beautiful feather falls grass. I love this plant, y'all. If you do not have a feather falls, you are missing out. This was rocking it in the Michigan garden at Walters Gardens when we visited last year. Like, look, seriously, look how long that is. That is easily two and a half feet long, that one strand. Hence why it's called Feather Falls. Will do great in containers, the landscape. It is an evergreen, so you've got that. And you've also got the Everillo. I have some of these, the Everillos, actually up by the sign bed up at the entrance, but they're kind of hidden right now because of all the annuals that are in front of it. But this thing is stunning in the ground. Have it in front of some dark lore petalums. Again, nice evergreen. This is one of those grasses you do not want to cut. Do not cut these. Just let them go and they will be beautiful and happy. Mound, trail over, stunning. So lots and lots of options here at Creekside Nursery. So again, come see us Wednesdays through Saturday. Come this Saturday. Come get your burgers from Bolton's and do not get their onion rings. They're terrible. You don't want the onion rings. Just tell them, oh, Jenny said they're awful. I will go ahead and sacrifice for everybody and just eat all the onion rings because they're that bad. Because um, if I say that they're good, then y'all come and you they sell out of onion rings and Jenny doesn't get any. So I'm going to tell you that they're terrible. You don't want them. Blech. Just joking. So Jenny, she's also Jenny Bolton. She's the duo. So she's a Jenny also. So she actually does save me some. So get the onion rings, the fries. The burgers are divine. Everything's delicious. So we're so excited to have them. Monarch class. Sign up for that. Other classes will be coming. It's late. I need to go eat supper. I'm starting to ramble. As always, thanks so much for going to Creekside. Y'all have a great day. See you in the next video. Bye, friends.